Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to Crochet Podcast, episode 101. One hundred and one. That's like so many things like Dalmatians or finished objects or whips or FOs. If you don't know what those are, finished objects are FOs and works in progress or things you're working on are whips. So it could be 101 whips. But I'm pretty close on FOs. So thanks so much for inviting me over. If you are new to this channel, my name is Krista and that is my secret urinary, my craft space in my own home and I love it. This channel is all about crochet and crochet related goodness. If any of that's of interest to you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the notification bell beside that so you don't miss out on any more awesome goodness just like this. So I'm gonna start with what you know you're gonna see. I know you know it. This is the Guzzling Granny Baby Blanket. Named so because of the amount of yarn it eats up. It is a yarn eater. It uses up about twice as much yarn as most of my other baby blanket patterns, but it is gorgeous and worth it. So let me show you from behind. Check this out. I might have to fold it in half. I do have to sew in two of my ends. Can you see? If I unfold it back here, or maybe I'll hold it this way. Isn't that great? So I made it kind of twin size. Well, not twin size, but like lapgan size. So if I'm watching TV, it's perfect to go over your legs, down to your feet, and you can kind of cuddle up in it. It is super squishy. You see that, isn't it great? And like textured, all that goodness. Look at that blanket. It's everything, right? So this is, da da da. The Guzzling Granny. I love it. Let me put it here. Can you still see it? Let me see if I can make this pillow taller. There we go. That's the Guzzling Granny right there. And it is a tutorial coming up tomorrow, so keep your eyes peeled. And also a written pattern over on my website, secretyourunnery.com. So if you want to get the pattern first, you can go grab that even today. So then I wanted to make a little tissue box cover. I just wanted to sit in bed, make something up like nice and quick and easy. A simple project, easy for beginners, but also practical, something you can use around your house, something you could sell at craft fairs, like a usable item for your home that's beginner friendly and easy enough to do. I also wanted to incorporate the colors of my favorite tissue box. So I get this at Care For, my local grocery store. I, this is my favorite design that they have. They have one also similar in pink, like pink on the background and kind of turquoisey, same kind of colors, which I also love, but this is my favorite. So I went through all of my yarn, being like I could get these yarn colors and make my own tissue box cover. So when these are out of stock and I can't get it anymore, I can still have the same color scheme on my tissue boxes. So I went through all my yarn. I did have this cranberry. Where's my cranberries down there? Let me get the cranberry for you. So you can see what I was supposed to do before I deviated from my own plan, because I did. This is a lovely cranberry color from Butterfly. It's from Spinner and Spinner, but Butterfly is the brand. They call it chunky, the size four worsted. But I thought that is pretty much the red on that box right there. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to use anything fancy. It's just a tissue box cover. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy yarn. So this local Kenyan acrylic is about 85 cents a ball. Don't know who that is. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll just use that nice and thick and quick. But then I pulled all my colors together. Where's all my colors? Where's the green I liked? Oh, there it is. So I pulled my colors together. Let me see if I can also hold up the box. You can see the colors. So I pulled the colors out and I was like, that's great. And I know I should have used that red. I know I should have, but I'm like, what about good old Bougainvillea? <laughs> what about that? That is more yarnery. Like that's more me even than the tissue box. It's still really fun, right? So, I'm like, oh, I'm going to use these. This is going to be my tissue box cover. So I got my colors and I sat down, got my hook. I used a five millimeter 
Now let me show you in order. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so this is the first one that I tried. Uh, it is wrong completely. Way too many uh, stitches in the middle. Like way too many. Like way too many stitches. It doesn't lay flat. It's a hot mess. Like that, it's, it's supposed to be a circle, not that interesting snowflake. I mean, you want to make a snowflake, you can never make a snowflake. You want to make a flower, boom, snowflake. Right? Anyway, so I cap that so you can have a nice little laugh about it. Then, which one is next? Oh, so I don't know what I did with this one. Did I reduce it? Yeah, so then I reduced it. And it's pretty good, it's still wobbly. Like it's still too many stitches. Uh, and it's too small for, like even if I used it for the tissue box, it would stretch out, but not, not enough. It would be like too tight to get on and off of my uh, tissue box. So this is the second version of my flower. Insert buzzer sound here. Third version, right, is that right? Yeah, one, two, three. Third version, I'm like, I'll put a little row of single crochet after these doubles. That'll give me some more space, some more distance, so my flower can lay flat. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good, but I think it looks messy. Hmm? I don't know, it doesn't look that good. The stitch count's getting pretty good. See, it's a bit, it's much more flat. Let me put it on the back of my hand, there you go. It's a lot flatter, so I mean, I'm, it's getting better, but it just doesn't look good. I mean, that looks, I'm not saying cat vomit, but it's not that great, tell you that much. I wake up to prettier things on my driveway. So I'm like, that's just not gonna work out. So then I'm like, what if, instead of doing the single crochets after the double, I just do one row of single crochet in the center, just to give that little extra distance, a little extra space. So fourth try, I did that. And then look, all these little things make sense. I did, uh, oh, I also did, well, I'll tell you about that in the pattern. That's my, I got a trade secret in there. It worked out so great. I'm like, I got to do that all the time now. Anyway, uh, this beauty, I'm like, that's a keeper. Love it. Everything's great. Hmm? It's all lovely. It all is nice and flat. It's pretty much the right size for a tissue box. Right, so by the time you join it, it just has to stretch a little bit, not like a lot. Anyway, I love it. That's my new favorite granny square. So this, it should be finished object because it is a new granny square pattern, but it wasn't my goal at the time. And I didn't sew in my ends. So that one's not a finished object yet. But I moved on from there. Ready for it? Tissue box cover. Now I could open that up and pull the tissues out so you can actually see it. But this is my only square tissue box cover. It's actually Ben 10. Trademark, copyright. <laughs> the only one I could get that was square. And I've got this years ago. This is when I was teaching classes um, out at Brackenhurst. I was doing like a community outreach crochet program out there. So I got a whole bunch of tissue boxes, square ones that we could cover. And then I never ended up, it just, that whole, pro, that was just, that project just didn't work out. It was not, not cost effective. It cost me like 200 something dollars a week. Cost me. So I mean, yeah, that didn't work out. Anyway, <laughs> it was a good college try. And I'm like, where, I must have, because at my grocery store now, they are rectangular. They are not square. So you got a skinny side and you got a square side, right? So I'm like, don't I have one of those left? It was in the garage. I'm like, I'm gonna go get it. Sure enough, one left, Ben 10, there we go. So that is gonna be a tutorial coming up. So it's really fun to do. After I finished it, I'm like, I don't know about that flower at the top. You know what I mean? I don't, I think it should be more like flowers along the sides and Tissues coming out of the top, not like a you know a popcorn flower textured thing at the top. I woke up the next day. I liked it. I'm like, yeah, it's cute. I mean, I I didn't I didn't not like it, but at the time, I'm like, what I should do is just a flat little panel 
like that to sit at the top of the tissue box. So instead of the big pink flower that matches everywhere else, I was gonna make one for you, but then I got busy doing something else I'm gonna show you. It would kind of look like that. And I'm like, that'd be kind of cute because it kind of keeps the focus down around the edges and the tissue coming out without looking like you're crowning the tissues or something like that. Can you see the top of that? It's a bit nutty. So I think when I do my next one, I'm gonna do that for the top. I think that would look cute. Like, you know, not too much. So that is going to be a tutorial and a written pattern thing coming out. Just saying, thick and quick. And I have an extra one. I did one in, in the turquoise and green. So I'm on a roll. Then I'm like, oh, I should make, I'll make another flower, like with different colors. I'll make a few of them so I can like show you and all that. And then I was like, you know what I want to do? You know, you always see these flowers, you know, the popcorns or the sunburst or whatever they are. And then if you want to do a sunflower, you just do, or the patterns are brown in the center, yellow for the flower, yellow for the petals or the popcorns or whatever stitch you're using for your petals. And that's a sunflower. And it kind of, it doesn't make me crazy, but it's kind of, it's been on my list of things to do because it's like, oh, well, number one, it's on a sunflower. It is a daisy granny square or a popcorn flower or something just with, with sun, with, um, with sunflower colors. It's kind of cheating, right? So, well, I mean, for me being myself. So I'm like, I am going to get a nice yellow and a nice brown, and I am going to make a pattern from my own sunflower. So I did. Now I have to tuck them in my tail because I didn't sew in the tails on this because I have a, well, because I'll tell you why. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. So that's a sunflower. I'm feeling very sunflowery about that. Let me see if I can turn down this light a bit. Does that help? Maybe. So now my problem with this one, I like the center part. I don't know how I can show you just the center flower, or maybe that's what I'll do for it. But there's too many petals. I'm like, that is a super cute sunflower, right? But I did two rows, and for the inside round, this one here, I did a petal every two stitches. And then for the outside round, I'm like, I wanted it to be lush, so I put a petal every stitch, plus increase, because it's another round, around, another round around. So it ended up being super petally like very lush, like more lush than a sunflower would be. And I'm like, oh, you know what that is? I know you know, right? It's a dahlia. I thought it was a chrysanthemum, but then I Googled it and I'm like, no, that wasn't the flower I was thinking of. I'm thinking of a dahlia. Who doesn't want dahlia? Granny squares, like all day, dahlia all day. So I'm like, I finished this, this one up quick because and I kept it to show you. I was gonna frog it back and I'm like, no, let me show you what happens when, you know, petals gone wild. But look how many petals are on the side of that thing, right? Very lush. And you can barely see the little, you know, the little leaves behind, but there is some leaves in the corners, some small ones, but I still liked it, but it's not, I wouldn't call this a sunflower either because it has too many petals on the back row. So to fix it, I would have to go back, take out this entire row, like my second row, and then put just two petals in per one petal. So there's 12 petals on the first row. I could do 24 petals on the second row. That'd be a pretty good sunflower. This, no, it's still a fail, but it's still a finished object. It's a finished object fail, but I could also use it for like a granny square blanket or popping it in something. It's not a waste for sure and it was a great learning experience. Now, are you ready for it? This is like my favorite thing. Like I walk around the house with it and I envision it on all my clothing. <laughs> I'm like, I could put it here, I could put it there, I could put it here. Okay, are you ready? Take a sip, get coffee, take a break, or come back. Are you back, are you good? Okay, ready? Do, 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 do. Boom! Dahlia, what? What? Look at the eyelash in the middle. Mm. I'm like, oh, so for a dahlia, I'm like, how am I gonna get that little center bit? I'm like, I could do like, when I'm doing the single crochet, I do little picots as I go along. You could pico around in the center, that little circle you make to start your flower. I could pico in there. And then 
but I'm like, what color should the center be? And da da da. And then I was looking, I'm like, oh, I was looking at my fancy yarn on that side. That's my fancy yarn shelf. So I was looking over there and I'm like, ooh, eyelash dazzle. That's already perfect for the center of a flower. All the little stamens sticking up. I mean, that is cute as a daisy. Cuter, cute like a dahlia. So I got, I was looking for the right color. So this is a bit gold and, and like ivory. It's like a light, the lightest gold they have, but it does technically have metallic gold in there. And I'm like, I can pull that off, but you know what I mean? Some people might think it's gauche. <laughs> Not me, just saying. Then I'm like, I do have this eyelash. I have one eyelash that does not have metallic, only one, because all of my others have metallic in it. And it is this color right there. And then I'm like, oh, I also have this yarn, which is gorgeous. I'm like, I could do that together. So look, isn't that just like everything? So the first row is half doubles, then doubles, and then trebles. So there's, it's a three row flower, but isn't that just lush? I'm like, I could put it on my hat. I could build a bag around it. I could like just wear it. <laughs> I could just put it like on my shoulder and walk around shopping. I mean, I love it. So this got me all like fired up. Who says that anymore? Just me, I guess. Anyway. I loved it. I still love it. I think it's great. It could be so many colors. In my head, I'm like, you start out like with an ivory center, which is why, where's my, where's my cute eyelash dazzle gone? There it is. Oh, see, that's even cute in there. Hold on. See, you could start out with a little, like a beigey kind of center. See, that's cute, right? You could start out with a, like a beige center and then go to like a light lilac and then work out to like an or orchid purple kind of color, you know, like from light to dark for the outside petals. So cute, but for making the pattern, I'm like, no, I'm just gonna use the one color. I have the eyelash that matches the yarn. Good enough, it's, we're just like practicing, right? So, so happy with that. Now, yes, it's gonna be a pattern, but what I'm thinking of doing, cause it was so fun, I pretty much made like a new granny square every day for three days is do a like for next year for 23 2023 do a granny square a month yeah one new granny square a month like a flower kind of granny square and i'm not sure i'm gonna have to like work on it to see how many to make i think if we made four four flowers like four granny squares each month of whatever the granny square is like pick your colors, do you know what I mean? Or however, I don't know how it's gonna go. But four granny squares a month, and then at the end, we join up, we join them up into a blanket. Do you know what I mean? We can like mix and match them, or we can have like different, different colors, like four different colors, and we make each flower in each different color. I don't know, there's so many ways you could do it, right? Or you could do it from like dark flowers to light flowers but wouldn't that be so cute? And not like a huge blanket because I mean, you know what I mean? It's more like a showpiece, like something to drape over your patio furniture. Like only when company is coming over. Do you know what I mean? Like just a, just a really cute throw to be like, oh yeah, I made that, hmm, I did. How cute. So four granny squares a month, little like little guys, like normal. So cute. So anyway, that has me all excited and I'm like, oh, I gotta do it. So that's what I was working on. Those are my finished objects. Now this, technically a finished object, I've sewn in the ends. I'm not really happy with it or anything. Like I'm, this is not gonna be, this is like a learning experience, but I wanted a headband today. And apparently when I moved, I threw them all out. I'm like, I don't wear headbands, get rid of them all. Burn them. Whew, I didn't burn them, I donated them. But <laughs> apparently I don't have any headbands. And I'm like, didn't I crochet one? And didn't I leave it right there? I did, so I put it on. Anyway, those are my finished objects. And that is kind of still what I'm working on is making some more patterns of flower granny squares for next year. Oh, are you excited about that? Do you like granny squares? I love a good granny square. It's been a while since I've had a granny, a granny moment. So I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm loving it actually.
So on to news of the week. It is warming up. Not that warm, but it's not frigid. It's not like, you know, your fingers are going to break or snap off like icicles if you use them. It's, it's okay. I think it's probably, oops, yeah, it's 22 degrees in the urinary. I prefer a good old 24, but I can manage a 22. So it's, this is a second day. It's been 22. I don't mind. So I filmed the guzzling granny this morning, got it edited, uploaded, ready to go tomorrow. So excited about that. You are going to love it and ready to start doing some more filming and stuff like that. Another thing I want to do is a crochet with me. Now, let me know your opinion about this. I didn't know anything about it. It showed up as a tag, like a suggested tag to add to one of my videos a few months ago. And I was like, what even is that? I've never heard of it. Never thought of it. Never heard of it. It is crochet with me. No talking. That was the tag crochet with me. No talking. And I just put that on the burner. I'm like, that it would be interesting like i'd be interested in that like crochet with i don't want i don't need to hear you but have company when you're crocheting like have some music like i'm crocheting you're crocheting i'm not crocheting alone do you know what i mean i kind of thought that was interesting so if you are interested in something like that i think the gist of it is well what i want to do i want to make a new pair of slippers do you want to see why it's shameful well it's just shameful but i'm going to show you how bad it is now, these are two years old and they've been washed repeatedly. They could get washed again, but they didn't come out of the wash very clean looking the last time. I still wear them. That's embarrassing, right? So these are my two hour slippers from a couple years ago. I did the trim in lambkin in a very beige color. <laughs> No, it's supposed to be white, but it picks up all the dirt ever. And you're basically wearing, what do you call those things? Like, a, you know, the mop where you mop, your, you mop the floor, a Swiffer. You're basically wearing a Swiffer whenever you put your slippers on. Not really the point. How's it going to stay clean? You're just going to have a really clean house and really dirty slippers all the time. So I'm not using lambkin. Or if I use lambkin, I'm using dark lambkin, like black. Anyway, no white lambkin on a slipper, just saying. Learn from my... <laughs> fail attempt. So what I'm thinking of doing is making a pair of slippers. So I sit down and film it, film my hands making a pair of slippers without talking or without going slow. Like I could just do it at my speed. Probably be about an hour, maybe an hour, 15 minutes to get the pair of slippers done. So if that is something you'd be interested in or you would watch, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you're like, what? I never would. You can also tell me that. You can tell me I'm crazy. It's not going to hurt my feelings. That ended a long time ago. <laughs> So let me know about that. Also, I want to give some big shout outs to my lovely family members. Mwah! Love you all. And starting alphabetically, good old Caroline and Charlotte, Carrie, Kathy, Cindra, Claire, Donna, Jacqueline, Carrie, Kim, Chris, Crystal, Leslie, Mama Hodge, Crochet and Crafts, Marie, Narell, Tracy, and of course, Gina. So love you all so much. Thank you for being a part of this community. And do, do, do. Family chat on Monday, because I can totally remember it, because I did all my work today. So on Sunday, I'm going to be sitting right there doing a puzzle, I hope, or crocheting in bed, one of the two. But I wouldn't mind a puzzle. That cutie over there, but I'll show you next week. I'm, I'm excited about it. I love a good puzzle. It takes me about, a, it takes me more than a day. I could do it in a day, but, uh, you know, I get a bit tired of sitting there the whole time. I like to get up in the afternoon, go do something with the kids. And then when I come back, I don't like doing puzzles at night. The light's not good enough. So then I, I finish it the next morning when I really should be doing something more productive than a puzzle. But I love it anyway. So let's see. Tip Tuesday. Did you see Tip Tuesday or did you not see Tip Tuesday? So I did Tip Tuesday as a short. I don't know how that, I, I thought it would just be in my playlist and like my uploads and stuff. I guess it goes into a different section. So if you did not see Tip Tuesday, let me know. I think maybe I have to do Tip Tuesdays as like a normal video, like as we're doing right now. Because uh, a lot of people didn't see it. And they're like, what Tip Tuesday? And I'm like, you didn't see it? Or maybe I'll put it up as both a short and a video. Anyway, let me know your opinion about that. If you saw it or you yeah, didn't see it, because I, wa I wanted you to see it. It was, it was a good one. They're really short, like 30 seconds, 40 seconds, but there's nothing wrong with that being a video. So maybe I should just do it that way. Anyway, let me know what you think. And now it's time to announce last week's winner. Do, do, do. I really should just wait and not do sound effects and do a drum roll. That's what grown-ups would do, right? Okay. <laughs> so last week's winner, the question was, what is your favorite podcast? And our winner is... 
See, I didn't do the drum roll. I almost did. Oh, in my head, I was doing the drum roll. Anyway. Cheryl Herrera. Congratulations, Cheryl. Yay. So Cheryl has won my most recent pattern, the Guzzling Granny. Congratulations. So comment under this video and also send me an email, Krista at secretyarnery.com, and I will email emu. E I will email you that pattern as soon as I'm sitting at my computer. So Cheryl says, need to learn how to make those vines. They're beautiful. Thank you so much. I have to go with number 71 podcast because I make a lot of blankets. Thank you. That's about all I know how to do. I wish I knew how to make stuffed animals and I'm going to try and make a crochet pillow cover. Thank you. I always love your balls that you've crocheted. <whistles> Maybe I should go the other way. <laughs> So congratulations to you, Cheryl. And if you want to win a pattern, you just have to be a subscriber of the channel and answer the question of the day under this video now. So question of the day, what flower would you like your granny square to look like? I picked Dahlia, I'm all about a good Dahlia. Anyway, <laughs> let me know that in the comments down below if you have a favorite flower you'd like incorporated into a granny square or a granny square to look like. And I'll be announcing a winner in the next podcast. So thanks so much for inviting me over. If you haven't subscribed, it's not too late. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell beside it down below. And we'll see you in the next video. Stay hooked. I guess I don't have to shout at my microphone on, right? <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> That's my kids. That's my kids. They're playing uh, lightsabers outside. They made DIY lightsabers and they're doing all the Obi-Wan Kenobi moves. So you might be hearing that throughout the podcast. Make sure I'm recording. Yeah, that's good. So love you ladies so much. I hope, I think you're all ladies. I don't want to be politically incorrect. <laughs> so question of the day today is what flower would you like to have represented or created into or incorporated into or a granny square look like? You think I could say the question a little better, right? What flower would you like made into a granny square? What flower would you like to be a, a granny square? What flower, what flower, I can't do it. How do you even say that? A flower into a granny square, granny square flower. What flower would you like to see in a granny square? No, what was a granny square to look like? Hmm? There, I did it, finally, imagine. Do you think I did it? I hope so. Oh, still haven't talked about that. Didn't write it down, that's why. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Can you hear the kids now? They're literally hitting, hitting each other with magic fort sticks. <laughs> Best game ever. Put electrical tape around them so each kid has their own different colored lightsaber and they're like, <laughs> they're going at it. Anyway, I better pop outside there and make sure they're okay. <laughs> Stay hooked.